In previous video, we discussed the projectile hitting a heavy object attached to a pendulum inelastically, and we found out that the energy is not conserved. The question that remained unanswered is, where is the remaining energy? In this video, we are going to discuss this in more detail, and hopefully, everything will make perfect sense. Let's take a look what exactly happens during the collision in inelastic scattering. In the moment of collision, the heavy object is gonna apply a force on the projectile to slow it down. The same force is gonna be applied by the projectile on the heavy object and therefore it starts to move and eventually the velocity of the projectile will match the velocity of the heavy object so they become merged together. The important lesson to take from this is that the heavy object had to produce a work to slow down the projectile, but it didn't stop it completely because the whole thing started to move due to the impact. What we are interested here is the ratio between the final velocity and the initial velocity because this is going to tell you what fraction of the kinetic energy of the projectile was transformed into a kinetic energy of the whole object and what fraction was consumed to slow down the projectile. If we compare these two scenarios, it is obvious that the bigger projectile is gonna lose less velocity compared to smaller projectile. And therefore, the ratio between final and initial velocity is gonna be bigger. This should mean that in a second example, more energy was distributed into the kinetic energy of the whole object. Let's conduct some calculations to see this better. To note the initial velocity vi, which is let's say 100 meters per second, with the mass of the projectile m and the mass of the big object 9 times bigger. After impact, the whole object has the mass of 10 m now, and we need to find the velocity after the impact, which we calculate from the conservation of momentum. We can move the mass on the other side and cross m from which we get that final velocity is 10 times smaller than the initial velocity of the projectile. We see that there is a significant decreasement in the projectile velocity, so the big object had to put a lot of work to slow it down, and only a fraction of the initial energy is left for the movement. So from our calculations, we expect that only one-tenth of the initial energy was transformed into movement and the rest was used for slowing down the projectile. We can easily check if this is true by just calculating the kinetic energy of the projectile and the whole object after the impact separately. The initial energy is the kinetic energy of the projectile and the final energy is the kinetic energy of the whole object moving with the velocity Vf. We know that the final velocity of the whole object is one-tenth of the initial velocity, so we can plug that in and by some simple algebra we get this equation. We see here that this is the expression for initial kinetic energy of the projectile, so the final equation looks like this. So we see that the final energy of the whole object is 10 times smaller than the initial kinetic energy of the projectile. So that's it for this video. And if you have any questions, just write down in the comments and I will try my best answering.